Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowds said, This is the prophet Jesus, from Nazareth of Galilee. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> Palm Sunday. A beautiful day. Thank you for all those who participated in this drama that uh, Matthew the Evangelist uh, depicted for us. Um, this is not what I had written down, but um, as I listened to the, to the parts, uh, it struck me that Matthew was talking about what was Jesus really looking for when he was going to Jerusalem? Did he know that he was going to die? And Matthew indicates that he did know that. Did he know that there was going to be, he was going to be resurrected in three days? Uh, there's an intimation of that in Matthew's uh, narrative of the Passion. But what struck me so forcefully was the betrayal by his own friends friends who have been with him for years, three years at least, in his public ministry. So this narrative of Jesus' triumphal arrival in Jerusalem is one of great expectations and then dashed hopes. The great crowds coming to Jerusalem for the Passover celebrations surround Jesus. Some spread their cloaks on the, ground, on the road. Others cut tree branches and spread them in his path. The people shout, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who is coming in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. Now we use Hosanna, that word, in our liturgy. It's a, it's a Hebrew expression of two words, meaning save, we pray. Remember that. Every time we say that in our liturgy from the altar, we all repeat it, save we pray. That's what Hosanna means. This is found in Psalm 118 in verse 25. We beg you, Yahweh, save us. We beg you, Yahweh, give us victory. So the people, even some of Jesus' followers, expected Jesus or at least his presence in Jerusalem during that great festival with so many crowds coming into Jerusalem. They expected him to at least spark a revolt against Roman rule. Surely, this prophet of David's line, David, the last great king of Israel, this prophet will bring us victory over the Roman oppressors. And Jesus came to Jerusalem to find peace or death. Jesus knew Jerusalem, or in Hebrew, Jerusalem, Yer literally means foundation of peace. What was he going to face there? There were hosannas in the beginning, but in the end, disillusion, the crowd didn't want peace. They wanted violence. They wanted to revolt against Rome. Years of oppression at the hands of Rome, in particular, their governor Pontius Pilate and Herod Antipas, the puppet king, had taken their toll. They were fed up, but the world turned upside down for them. Their expectations were dashed against the rocks of reality. 
the king of creation, judge of all mankind, arrested, put on trial, convicted, and executed. There would have been voices on the edge of the crowd, perhaps, people who wanted to speak and yet remained silent. There would have been voices of reason in the angry mob. But those voices was silenced by those in the crowd shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Their silence equaled consent. Remaining silent in the face of injustice is a way of standing with the unjust. Many in that crowd that Good Friday did just that. As the sky darkened that noon when Jesus hung on the cross, there would have been those who felt foolish to have ever proclaimed Jesus as a king. Some had waved tree branches and shouted at the tops of their lungs, Hosanna. They would now wish they had remained silent. From the joy of that Sunday entrance to the darkness of the Friday we call good, the crowd went from praise to derision. When Jesus failed to vent their anger at Rome, the violence turned against the son of David. Each one of us must look into our hearts and ask, would I have been silent? Would I have run away like his friends did? Do I run away from hard decisions, from doing what I know is right? But we must not judge ourselves too harshly. God is the great forgiver. Through God's power in Jesus Christ, death was defeated. We must believe that. Our expectations are grounded in faith and hope in God's promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ. So in our lives, in our hearts, we can shout in thanksgiving with our faces toward heaven. Arise, arise, shine out, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen on you. Praise God. Amen.